With a large rally, the people of Argentina celebrated Militancy Day, the 50th anniversary of the return of Juan Domingo Perón from exile. Russia denounced that the United States and its partners intend to include the Ukrainian conflict on the agenda of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum. And as part of his official visit to Algeria, the president of Cuba, Miguel Díaz-Canel, reported having reached agreements to boost economic, commercial, financial and cooperation ties to bring them to the level of political ones. Hello and welcome to Telesur English. I am Estefania Bravo from the headquarters of Quito in Ecuador. This is from the South. With a large rally, the people of Argentina celebrated Militancy Day, the 50th anniversary of the return of Juan Domingo Perón from exile. The meeting, led by Vice President Cristina Fernández de Kirchner, took place at the Diego Armando Maradona Stadium in the city of La Plata. The event seeks to commemorate Perón's return to Argentina after 17 years in exile. During her speech, Vice President Cristina Fernández de Kirchner highlighted the respect for life above differences of any kind as one of the achievements of Perónism. This was a great achievement, the great achievement that we incorporated. That agreement where we could have all the differences in the world, but nobody wanted to kill anybody. Nobody wanted to kill anybody else just because they thought differently, not even those who had turned death into a political instrument. And here's more on what Cristina Fernandez had to say. We Argentinians must incorporate the issue of security into the debate and the democratic agreement, a complex issue that today Argentinian society suffers as a whole. We must put an end to absurd debates because democracy has a debt with our neighbors, with our neighbors' security, the neighbors, the citizens, and no political party has been able to solve that. President of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, highlighted the work of the multidisciplinary team that built the territorial defense of the Venezuelan Esequibo before the International Court of Justice. I want to publicly recognize today before you our Executive Vice President Delcy Rodriguez Gomez, who has given a historical lesson today before the International Court of The Hague, defending the historical rights of the Exequivo that Venezuela has forever and ever, taking the slogan of Venezuela to the International Court of Justice. The son of Venezuela is born in the Exequivo. I want to congratulate the legal diplomatic team of historians of Venezuela because they have fought for our Esequibo. Sooner rather than later, we shall emerge victorious from that battle. A battle for the legal and territorial rights of Venezuela over the Esequibo region. In Colombia, the sixth edition of the China-Colombia Dialogue, organized by the Chinese Embassy in Bogotá and the Colombian Chinese Chamber of Investment and Commerce, began on Thursday. In Colombia, the sixth edition of the China Dialogue, uh, Dialogue Table, organized by the Chinese Embassy in Bogotá and the Colombian Chinese Chamber of Investment and Commerce, began on Thursday. Representatives of the Bogotá Mayor's Office and of several Chinese companies are taking part in the meeting. China's Communist Party 20th National Congress has created opportunities for the development of relationships between China and Colombia. China will continue to adhere to the base national policy of opening up 
and the correct direction of economic globalization. It will continue to provide new opportunities for the world with the new Chinese development. And this will better benefit the people of all countries, including Colombia. And Peru's Prime Minister Aníbal Torres requested from Congress to pass a motion of trust regarding a process that could lead to the dissolution of Parliament and mid tensions with the executive. Back my members of his cabinet, the President of the Minister's Council, raised before the plenary of Congress a motion of trust on a bill that seeks to repeal Law 31-399, which reinforces the scope of a, of a referendum. The nor, the nor modifies Articles 40 and 44 of the law on the rights of participation and citizens control. After the Prime Minister's presentation, Congress President Jose Williams Zapata postponed the plenary session until 3 p.m. local time to review the issue. In Bolivia, the High Electoral Court answered this Thursday to the petition to redistribute parliament seats introduced by the Department of Santa Cruz. At a press conference, the Electoral Court announced that in order to redistribute seats in the Assembly for 2025, the official census data must be delivered to them by September 2024, at the latest, well, that is three months ahead of the deadline set by the government. However, the final census results will be delivered in December 2024, thus preventing such a redistribution for the 2025 presidential elections from taking place. We're taking our first break now. Join us again after this. And also, don't forget to follow us on our TikTok account at Telesol English for more. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South, more news now. Russia denounced that the United States and its partners intend to include the Ukrainian conflict on the agenda of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum. Russia's Foreign Ministry Special Missions Ambassador representing Moscow at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, Kirill Vaskiv, regretted that the constructive work of the APEC during 2022 has been hindered by Australia, Canada, the US, New Zealand, and Japan with their attempts to politicize the forum. The United Nations organization welcomed the renewal of the food agreement that facilitates the export of grains and other products across the Black Sea. Secretary General Antonio Guterres held on Thursday the extension of the agreement and stated that he welcomes with great satisfaction the pact that seeks to facilitate the safe navigation in the export of food and fertilizers from Ukraine. The information was confirmed by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky via his Twitter account. And moving on, President Xi Jinping stressed that China views relations with the Philippines from a strategic perspective. These statements were made by the Chinese president during his participation in the 29th meeting of economic leaders of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, APEC, which is being held in Bangkok. Xi Jinping urged the bloc to strengthen learning from experiences, respond to the challenges of these times, and firmly advance a regional economic integration. Half a year ago, we had a phone conversation. Today, it feels good to meet face to face. I am also pleased to see here former President Mr. Arroyo, who is also our old friend. China is ready to continue its friendship and cooperation with the Philippines, work together for development and national renewal, and write a new chapter for bilateral friendly relations. In Indonesia, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and, and Chinese leader Xi Jinping held bilateral talks as the leaders of Asia's two biggest economies met on the sidelines of a Pacific Rim summit in Bangkok. President Xi Jinping stressed that China and Japan are different in social systems and national conditions, and the two countries need to step up dialogue and cooperation in such areas as digital economy, green development, fiscal and financial sectors, health care, and old age care, and in keeping the industrial and supply chain stable and unclogged so as to realize complementary and mutual benefits at a higher level.
Kenya reported two killed in the second deadly building collapse. The building collapsed on a neighboring house, killing two people. The early morning collapse is the second such incident this week, as building authorities warn of unsafe buildings in and around the city. Three other people were rescued alive from the family home next to the collapsed building located in the Raqqa neighborhood. Building collapses are common in Nairobi, where there is a high demand for housing and un unscrupulous developers often fail to comply with safety standards. Three houses were destroyed after glass explosion in Iraq. A large gas cylinder on the roof of a residential building exploded today in the northern Iraqi city of Sulaimania, leaving six people dead and 30 injured. According to news agencies, civil defense firefighters managed to contain the fire, the explosion completely. The destroyed at least three houses and five cars, and an unknown number of people were trapped under the, under the rubble, and rescuers are still searching for survivors. The president of the Kurdistan regional government, Masrur Barsani, ordered an investigation. In Lebanon, the parliament fails in its sixth bid to elect a new president for the nation in the absence of a consensus and under an interim government. The stalled voting occurs due to the fact that the parliament does not have a majority bloc. As a result, the blank votes received the highest count with a total of 46, while the independent deputy Michael Maud received 43. It is also expected that in the seventh attempt call for November 24th, the election for a new national president for the Arab country can be completed. We're taking our final break now. Join us again after this and also be sure to follow us to follow me on my Twitter account at Ibrao Telesur for more. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South, more news now. As part of his official visit to Algeria, the president of Cuba, Miguel Díaz-Canel, reported having reached agreements to boost economic, commercial, financial and cooperation ties to bring them to the level of politi political ones. At a press conference with his Algerian counterpart, the Cuban president highlighted the presence of the high-level delegation from the largest of the Antilles that has arrived in the African country. The Cuban president reaffirmed he will continue with the brotherhood cemented by the historical leaders of both nations. He also affirmed that they have identified areas and projects of collaborations that are important and on which they will work together. During our meeting, we will try to alleviate a little the Cuban economic context, canceling the services of the debt and postponing its payment to another time. Also, Algeria offers Cuba a solar power plant for electricity production. Algeria provides photovoltaic service for the city of Havana, capital of Cuba. For his part, the Cuban president highlighted the excellent state of political relations between the two nations and expressed that economic and commercial relations should be enhanced. These are important areas in which we will work together. They represent a mutual benefit, but above all, they mean for our country an important support that demonstrates the understanding towards our situation. Our two governments have identified areas such as health, energy, renewable sources, medical pharmaceutical industry, culture, scientific, educational, technological exchange as the most provisional ones for our collaboration. The Syrian government announced an amnesty decree to benefit over 2,300 military and civilian individuals wanted by the prosecutor's office as an act of national reconciliation. The Syrian government announced an amnesty decree to benefit these military and civilians that were wanted by the prosecutor's office 
as, as mentioned, an act of reconciliation. The program promoted by Damascus aims at fostering national reconciliation. The decree will especially favor military and civilian citizens wanted by the prosecutor's office for their involvement in the armed conflict imposed by the West more than a decade ago. The Qatar 2022 World Cup focuses the eyes of the world on the Arabic Peninsula of Qatar, its culture, its history, and its people. From Doha, our special envoy, Rolando Segura, has more. The eyes of the world look to Qatar, the nation located in the Arabian Peninsula, which shares an 87-kilometer land border with Saudi Arabia. Just under 3 million inhabitants live here, but only 300,000 are Qatari. The rest migrants like the family of Pedro and Maria, who came from Spain in 2014. Since then, they say much has changed in these parts. Not only at the building and infrastructure level, but also infrastructure, I believe that the country has opened up much more to the rest of the world. Arriving in a country with Islam as the official religion and Wahhabi Sunnis as the most representative factions, Maria was confident of job opportunities, but imagined an extremely conservative culture with complications for the women. And it has been just the opposite. It has its things. But within the religion, I live a normal life. I had my daughter here too, and they treated me very well in a Cuban hospital they have here. And they treated me very well. I didn't want to leave the hospital. Qatar is an emirate ruled by the Altani family since the mid 19th century and refused to join the Federation of the United Arab Emirates when it became independent in 1971. After 55 years of British protectorate, the current king, Sheikh Tamim bin Hama Al Thani, is seen by many as a modernizer. Qatar, of course, good county, Qatar is number one, Sheikh Tamim is number one, or like number one, Qatar of good place. A territory with mild winters and extremely hot summers where the geography practically desert has not made its inhabitants are. They are lovely people, very welcoming and very helpful. They can do that for you. The search for yours was Qatar's economy engine for several centuries until price plummeted in the 1920s with the cultivation of pearls, especially in Japan. In 1839, oil made the nation rich, but it was its large natural gas reserves shared with Iran that allow it today one of the highest real gross domestic product per capita incomes in the world. And it welcomes people from all religions, countries, as long as we respect that it is a Muslim country. Qatar's sporting tradition has at its core camel racing, horse racing, and hunting with trained birds of prey. Football was inherited from migrants from the energy sector. The 2022 World Cup accelerated investment in infrastructure and began to position the country as a family, art, and culture tourist destination. Rolando Segura, Telesur, Doha. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also be sure to follow us on our socials. We're on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. Until next time.